Hey, this is Mel with Beacon Code It, and I'm going to show you how to successfully complete a Code Eval Challenge. And I'm not going to tell you the details about how to do a specific challenge per se. This is more for you to understand the intricacies uh, that you need to be aware of when dealing with a challenge on Code Eval where you're receiving information from a file and you have to grab strings from a file and parse them out and change their types, stuff like that. All these little details that you have to do that might be difficult for you if you are a beginning programmer. I don't want you to get caught up in the details at this point of your development as a programmer. I want you to be able to solve challenges. So that's the reason you are hopefully viewing this tutorial and not in order to solve the Delta Time Challenge. All right, let's take a look. I went to CodyVal.com. I went to uh, the Challenges, and under Easy Challenges, you will see Delta Time. I have clicked it. Now I'm reading it, and it says that you're given a pair of time values, and the values are in hour, minute, second format with leading zeros. You are tasked with finding out the difference between the pairs. Notice it doesn't tell you if the pairs are going to turn out to be negative, if they're uh, in some kind of end time, start time format. They just are giving you pairs. So let's take a look. The next thing I'm going to do is look at the input sample, and it says it's an argument to a file that contains lines with the time pairs. You will see this often in CodyVal. Basically what they're telling you is they are going to be sending a file to your program. You will not know what the file is. The, co uh, the code eval structure, when you submit the solution, will have a way of dealing with the file and handling the lines in the file. So you don't have to worry about those details, the implementation of those details as of yet. But you should be able to understand them. I will walk you through that a bit. Um, however, they're showing you some examples here under the input sample. The file you will read will sort of look like this. Okay, it won't have these exact values, they're not promising that, but they will are promising the format, which is great. So we do know the format will look like this. So the first line, they're giving us example 14 colon 1 colon 5 7, a space, and then some other time, hour minute form, um, hour minute second format. Then the next line might look like this, with a space, huh, we see the pattern, one time, space, another time. Okay, now under the output sample, you can see some uh, outputs that it expects to receive from you based on these numbers, the, well, they're strings that they're giving you, okay, these times in string format that they're giving you. So um, one here from the input corresponds with what they expect to receive is output. The number two line here corresponds to the number two line here and what they expect to receive is the output and so on. So they're saying print a standard out. That means the console in C sharp system dot console dot right line. Okay. Print a standard out the time difference for each pair, one per line. That's where I am using right line versus just right. Um, and it says you must format them an hour minute second with leading zeros. Well that's groovy because guess what c is going to do that for us automatically. Now, if you uh, first thing I'm going to do before I submit the solution is just grab one of these lines, okay? Grab one of the input samples because we're going to use that in Visual Studio to help us mock up our solution. Let me go to Visual Studio now. I'm going to assume that you have gone to File, New, Create a New Console Application in c -sharp. All right? Name that whatever you want. Now, in between this static void main opening body tag and closing body tag, I have written some comments in here already to help us along. You should do the same. As you get more experienced in programming, you might want to do this less. You shouldn't really, but um, you know. It is what it is. Right now, please write out as much as you can about figuring the solution out. So, here I go. Simulate the line variable. Cool. String, 
Well, this line will be of type string. Why? Because we're reading it in from a file. It will be a string if you're reading it in from a file. I don't care if it's a number from a file. Guess what? The program will read it as a string because it's reading it from a file. It doesn't know that it's a number. It thinks that perhaps someone wanted to write the word 100 or um, some time value in a sentence. Okay? Okay, next step. Parse the line variable so that it is split up into pieces with which we can easily work. And then I continue this idea. Typically, we use the dot split method of string. We will always be reading in a string. Again, I told you that. We're always going to be reading in a string. So, um, there's a split method. Great. Split will take some string and split it up into pieces parts for you based on some character. In this case, the character will be a space. Why? Well, that's the delimiter here between the first time and the second time. Sometimes you'll see a comma. In this case, we see a space. So, let's start here. Line dot split. And I'm just going to put the parentheses in my semicolon. Okay? That's how I'm calling this method, split. Inside the parentheses is the argument to this method. We put a character. How do we tell the program it's a character and not a string? Well, strings are double quotes. Won't like that. Characters are single quotes. Why does it like the character and not the string? Well, that's what it expects as uh, the, uh, an argument to this method. So this is great. It's going to return an array, a string array, of as many items that can be split on here and by any character that you give it. So this will create an array, a string array of length 2. In the first slot you'll see this 14 colon 01 colon 5 second. The second slot of the array you'll see 12 colon 47 colon 11. Let's uh, create a variable to store the return value from this method. Again, it's a type string array. So this is how we tell it. It's going to be type string array. Now let's give it some variable name that makes sense to us. Um, times. That's fine. These are times. Okay, and let's uh, set it equal to line.split. Nice. Okay, now we have our method. We're calling the split method. I'm saying split it on a single space. Um, and we are assigning it to the variable called times. And it's times is type string array. Why is it type string array? That's what uh, the split method returns. Okay, we could tell it, we could tell what it returns here because if we hover over that word split, you will see string, and then the brackets, the square brackets. That means that's the return type. And then it will say space string dot split, and then it will tell you the parameters it expects. It tells you sort of the recipe here. All right. Okay. Now change the value of the strings into the needed type to perform the calculation. Well. We know that uh, these are times and not strings, and we can do some fun things with times and dates in C Sharp using the built-in uh, class date time, and that is under system. So I'm going to change these into system date time format here. So I'm going to start it off as that's going to be the type, the type, and uh, let's call this one end time, and let's assign it. Let's set it equal to. Uh, times zero. So this will be equal to 14 colon 01 colon 57, okay? Because that has been split up into this variable called times, which is an array, all right? Times zero. Now, why is it giving me this red line? Well, we need to change this string into a date time type. How do we do that? Well, there's handy dandy parse method, which we see all the time. We see it with ints, doubles, etc. So let's do system dot date time. Okay, so we say the namespace and then the class. And then let's do the method parse. 
there it is, parse, and then times zero. That's what we're parsing, all right? Okay, let's copy this. Let's do it again for the second item in our times array. So that will be at index one, and that will end up evaluating to this time here, 12.47.11, okay? And oops, we have to change the variable name because we can't have two things with the same variable name. Um, and we'll call this start time. I don't know if these are really start times and end times. I'm just calling them that, okay? It makes sense to me right now. Now, let's perform the calculation. Well, you'd think, okay, end time minus start time or start time minus end time, something like that could work. Great. Yes, you're right. Let's, uh, it doesn't really matter right now. Let's just start off like this, end time minus start time. Okay, that's part of it. Now, what are we going to save this as? What data type? What type can we save this as? Well, there is a time span class here. We're going to save it as system time span. So system time span, that's going to be the type. Let's figure out the variable name. Let's call this time diff. And let's set it equal to end time minus start time. So <coughs> our last step here is to write out the result and then test it. So to write out the result, we are going to use system.console, console, and the method is going to be right line. Why right line versus right? Well, it wants one result per line. That was in the instructions, okay? And the, what we're going to write out is time diff. Now, spoiler alert here. The code eval challenge doesn't say this, but I have done this challenge before. It is looking for an absolute value. Okay, an absolute value of the difference between the two times because it doesn't tell you which one is the start time and which one is the end time. So you don't want a negative number to show up. You want it always to be positive. There is a method of uh, this uh, time span, okay, called duration. And it returns an object whose value is the absolute value of the current time span object, okay? That's great. Let's use it. So we're just going to call it like that. We're going to call it, it is a, a non-static member. We're going to call it with time diff dot duration. And now all we're going to do is test it. I like to put a breakpoint in at the... Uh, closing curly brace of my um, main methods body. So right down here, that will pause the program's execution so we can see the program before it uh, closes on us. And then I'm just going to go up here and you'll see here, click start. And my program's building and let's test. And my test value from this case is 0, 1, colon 14, colon 46. Let's just verify that. Down here, that's what it's expecting. If I were you, I would take a few other values and test them out line by line. Let's start with uh, line 2, go back to Visual Studio, and paste that in uh, as the variable for line here, just to test it. Run it again. And that's 906.33, groovy, that's correct. Go ahead and test it with all five values. Once you're ready, let's go down here in CodyVal and click Submit Solution. You'll see a screen that looks like this. Okay, I'm choosing C Sharp here. And you'll see a very dark gray against a black, so it's super hard to read. But notice that the first two characters are the beginning, uh, beginnings of a comment, a multi-line comment, and so are the last two characters. Delete those. You'll also delete this line that says sample code to read in test cases. But it is telling you some extraordinarily valuable information. What it is telling you is that it already has set up for you 
a loop that will loop line by line over a file. The file is here. It will send you a file. Cody Bell will send it to you. Your program or here, the program is already set up to read that file and read it line by line. Guess what? Each line is going to be set up as a string variable called line. We're doing it right here. It's already there for you. So this is your loop, this while loop. Oops, you see it. Wow. This is looping over a whole file line by line. All right. What we are going to do is simply go back to Visual Studio, copy everything after the part where you declare and assign your string, <coughs> the, your string that we've called line also. Isn't that nifty? We called it line also. That's why I did that, okay? And I'm going to copy it all the way down here. I'm not going to worry about the comments. I'm going to go back to CodyVal and I'm going to paste it in right where it says do something with this line. And it's very, very, very hard to read. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to get rid of the comments because I just don't want them in there. It's fine for me in my test programs. You feel free to leave your comments in. It's just one of those things I don't like to see in my uh, solution here. So um, string line equals reader dot read line. So that will have our line variable um, and it will assign it for us. So in Visual Studio that's the equivalent of us saying uh, this. Okay. And again it's going back to CodyVal. It's just looping over every line right here. That's what this while statement is about. It will loop over every line in the file it gives us. And then do we just do what we need to do for each line. And we've already done it. At the bottom here you will see the ability to submit, which I will do right now. And it says sum solution submitted successfully. You can now view your score. Click that. And guess what? I solved it. Well I solved it before too. So um, you can go ahead and uh, there is a place for deleting things. I'll go ahead and delete this one because I don't need it. And there you go. I hope that helped you understand how to work uh, with CodyVal as a beginner. How to do things like splitting the lineup. How to understand that uh, the CodyVal editor will already have something set up for you that will handle files and will handle looping through uh, one sentence, one sentence of this file or one line of this file at a time and that will assign this line to a variable of type string called line. <laughs> okay, thanks so much. Let me know if you have any questions.